to Wavell Hines, five to Brian Lara. Very important session this one for the West Indies. They're looking to get back into the series. This pair bat very well. They'll score a lot of runs in this session because they're both aggressive players. They can start to put the owners back on the Australians a little. needing to get back into the series. Oh, the other thing that West Indies need to do is to put a bit of a dent in the confidence of the Australian side. I can't think of two better. Yo, Tokyo. <laughs> Tokyo. You want to have a game of stick? Moi? <laughs> yeah, you want to have a game of pool? No, no. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right, all right. But after this, I've been all right. And hey, I'm not Japanese, okay? Shit, yeah, whatever. I'm just going to rack them up then, all right, Beijing? <laughs> <laughs> Who's winning? We are. Australia's always bloody winning. No, the West Indies. <laughs> West Indies? What are you doing barricading for the bloody West Indies? You're not West Indian, are you? <laughs> no, I like to go for the suntan, gentlemen, you know? <laughs> Except for when we play the Kiwis and Tony Gregg. <laughs> Look, mate, these fellas got not enough runs, eh? These guys can't get runs in a Vietnamese pork roll festival. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to spend this trip. I'm talking about how you get it. You know this country, Australia? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, we swam. Oh, right. <laughs> hey, hey, did you see Susie Moroni on the way? <laughs> <laughs> Susie Moroni, that's funny. Yeah, we were. <laughs> we were following Susie Moroni. Yeah, and she got to the Philippines. She chucked his right hand turn. We nearly ended up in Cuba. We had to chuck a Yui all the way back. So, what's your name? Wong. How you doing, Wong? James Wong. Yeah, <laughs> mate. Your real name, Russ. Tran. Yeah. Jackie Tran. <laughs> What's your name? Black. Roberta Black. <laughs> it doesn't take no flack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And I'm very yellow. <laughs> and I'm very mellow. <laughs> So, what part of Africa are you from? <laughs> I'm from that Africa that broke away. <laughs> what? Where? Nah, bro, from here, bro. Australia, born and bred. Yeah, where? I live in Fitzroy. Hey, I live in Fitzroy. Where near the flats, eh? Not Fitzroy, you know, in Victoria. I come from Fitzroy Crossing in Western Australia. You know where the Kimberley is? No, I never heard of it, no. Well, do you know where Christmas Creek is? No, we're Buddhists, man. No. <laughs> well, do you know where Turkey Creek is? No, we're vegetarians. <laughs> well, then you don't know much about the bush, then, do you? Mate, I don't know shit about the bush, man. <laughs> I've been here 25 years, never seen a kangaroo, hey. Yeah? Well, except for when I went to the zoo at school and um, on Australia's Funniest Home Videos. Yeah? You know the one that bash up Marty Monster? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> There's my funny kangaroo there. So, have you ever been up north? 
Yeah, yeah, I went to Darwin. Yeah, yeah. Is that near you? Yeah, just down the road. Yeah, the really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only about 2,000 cases. <laughs> just around the corner, really. Yeah, just around the corner. Yeah. yeah. Mate, I went to Darwin, right? I went to see the jumping crocodiles. Have you seen that? Nah. Nah, mate, you go to Darwin, right? You get on this boat and they take you down Adelaide River and the captain gets his stick and he ties a rope to the stick and at the end of the, the rope he ties like pig's heads <laughs> and he dunks it in the water like this and he waits for the crocodile to come and the crocodile comes and he just yanks it up like this and the crocodile jumps up and grabs the pig's head just like that. True. Yeah. Well now you know why pigs don't fly in Darwin, eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And if that doesn't work, they just grab the nearest German tourist. <laughs> Everybody's happy. <laughs> so you got like you got emus and stuff with you got, hey? Yeah, bro, we got biggest mob emus, yeah, yeah. yeah. And emus are really popular in China. Yeah, yeah, yeah look, yeah, they've got emu farms in China. What the Chinese do is they, you know, they come here, they go to the bush and they buy like emu eggs and they take it home and they raise them and they grow them and shit. Yeah. Right, yeah. Well then they bloody fucking take my emu eggs, eh? Yeah, right. Because I don't want no emu of mine talking Chinese. No, <laughs> oh, no, no, they don't make them talk Chinese. They just make them taste Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, um, is it true that, right, is this true that you people have been here for 60,000 years? Bro, we've been here 60,205 years now. Yeah. Yeah. You know what they reckon? They reckon when the Aboriginal people first came to this country, right, to Australia, the only domestic animal we brought with us was a dingo. Hey, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you. <laughs> <laughs> you, you won't like this dingo, bro. Uh, we brought with us Ernie Dingo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I ain't eating him. <laughs> Our people have been around since the Stone Age. You know? oh, what? Yeah. 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 You know how here like you've got cave paintings? Yeah. Yeah, we've got cave mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we invented cricket, do you know that? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Cricket was invented by a really wise old Chinese man. His name was Deep Long On. <laughs> <laughs> and we invented fire. Do you know that? Yeah, and how'd you do that? Yeah, rub two chopsticks together. <laughs> Piece of piss, mate. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's your mob, hey. You mob been in that war. You know that big war, that Vietnam mob? That's your people, isn't it? Ah, oh, mate, we've been at wars for thousands of years. We're professionals, man. <laughs> you know you know how I'm like the tallest Vietnamese guy you ever see? <laughs> Is that because of MSG? <laughs> Apart from that, <laughs> I'll tell you a story, right? This is the last day of the Vietnam War. And we had to drive to the dock to catch a boat. So what happened is like, there was all these boats everywhere, right, on that day. And they all parked next to each other, like this, right? So what the people had to do is like, we had to climb on all these boats and fill up the last one, and they would leave. And then people would go and fill up the next one, and that one would leave, right? What happened to me is so that I had my feet on the first boat and my hands on the next boat. <laughs> And this wave hit, right? And the boat just parted. And I was like, just stretching like this. <laughs> and my dad started selling tickets for people to walk over me. <laughs> no, that's bullshit. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, man, we were on the, we, like, we were on the sea for about a, a week, right? Like, you know, ran out of fuel and everything. And then we had to jump on um, a barge. You know what a barge is? No. A barge, right? This is platform. And it's got fences, like this, all packed with sandbags. And during the war, they used to transport ammunition with it. So after the war, we transported people, okay? Yeah. So, you know, and the Americans are waiting for us in the international waters. So, you know, for a few days, we'll just like bobbing along like this, right? And then when we got to international waters, this humongous battleship comes right next to our barge and they set down this little platform. So all these soldiers come running down and standing there, throwing up canteens of water. Right? Because we hadn't drank anything for about a week, right? So my grandmother and me, we go, hey, you're a beauty, right? Water. So my grandmother and me, we go, so we ran up to the, the fence, we're sitting there, trying to grab these canteens of water. And we were there for about half an hour, right? Couldn't grab anything. So my grandmother just said, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Not in an Australian accent, of course, but uh, so she goes, fuck it. Right, so, <laughs> So 
we climbed down, as soon as we came down, the whole fence collapsed and killed everybody underneath. Man, we were so lucky. We've been buying tax lotto tickets ever since. Right? <laughs> yeah, but you know, it wasn't so funny at the time, you know, it's like, yeah, we were really lucky we left really early, but the people who left later, they, um, they got onto pirates, right? There were pirates came out. And this girl told me this story, okay? She survived when I lived. She reckons like all these pirates jumped on her boat. And what they did is that they tied all the men and put them on their knees. And these guys just walked behind them with hammers and smashed them in the back of the head like this and killed all the men. And all the children, all the little girls and all the women, they raped all the women. And then what happened after they raped them? These guys would tie an end of a rope to one leg and the other end they tie to the boat and would throw these women overboard until they drowned. So as soon as these women drowned, these guys would just cut this rope. So all over Southeast Asia, it's just like bodies of Vietnamese women just washed up on the beaches. That's very close indeed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they took us, the Americans took us right, to the Philippines, okay, to Subic Bay. Now, Subic Bay used to be one great big American naval car park situation, right? And so picture this. There was like 10,000 really hungry Vietnamese refugees, right, in a single file, heading towards the food tent. And we thought, well, hey, food, you're beauty, right? Guess what they gave us? They gave us a cheeseburger and a Pepsi. <laughs> yeah, and for dessert, we had hot dogs, right? We thought, well, hey, you beauty, hot dogs, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm standing there, and I'm looking at mine, and I said to the guy, I said to the guy, mate, this is disgusting. And the guy goes, what's wrong with it? And I said, well, in my country, we don't eat this bit of the dog, eh? <laughs> And then they took us to refugee camps yeah. on this tropical island called Guam. Now Guam was sort of like Club Med <laughs> with barbed wire around it. <laughs> like a bit like Woomera, right? <laughs> oh, no, it's not that bad, huh? <laughs> and then we were on Guam for about all oh, four months, right? And we had a choice. Maybe they're going to France, Canada, or Australia. We didn't want to go to France because, well, you know, French people live there. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't want to go to Canada because, well, you know, French people live there. <laughs> <laughs> and so we picked Australia. Man, we, got, we were like the first Vietnamese boat people in this country, okay? And they had no idea, didn't know what to do with us, okay? So the immigration department tried to help us out. So they thought they'd give us an interpreter, you know, to help us get bank books and stuff like that. You know how close they came to an English-speaking Vietnamese guy in 1975? What? They gave us a guy from Malta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. The first six months in this country, I thought Maltese was the official language. <laughs> 